new questions about an effort to curb climate change. Some companies and individuals are trying to shrink their carbon footprint by purchasing so-called carbon offsets to essentially cancel out their pollution. This is often done by planting trees and protecting forests, which help trap and store planet-warming carbon dioxide. But wildfires burning in the West are threatening land set aside for carbon offsets. As senior national and environmental correspondent Ben Tracy reports, that is making trees a less reliable ally in the fight against climate change. And so the fire came right through here? Yeah, the fire started uh, to our west. The first thing you notice on a drive through this normally lush green Oregon forest is that nearly all the trees are dead. Pretty much as far as your eye can see, it's burnt out. Yeah, no, it's, it was a big fire. Last summer's bootleg fire was the third largest wildfire in Oregon history. Smoke from the massive blaze turned the sky gray as far away as New York City, nearly blocking out the sun. More than 400,000 acres were lost. So about 110,000 of that was on us. On our landscape, it was very, very tough. It was a, a tough thing to see. Honestly, it, it, it made you sad. Douglas Reed is president of Green Diamond Timber Company, which owns and logs this land. But they've also found another way to make money on all of these trees, by not cutting them down. It's what us selling carbon offsets allows us to do is change the way we manage this forest to make it a, an older and more mature forest. Companies like Green Diamond let their trees grow longer and larger, allowing them to suck in more planet-warming carbon dioxide. In the carbon offsets market, that generates credits they then sell to polluters looking to offset their own carbon emissions. In theory, it's like balancing a scale. Green Diamond sold offsets to Shell, Philips 66, and Microsoft. But when those trees went up in smoke last year, so did those offsets. And all that carbon that essentially was being stored in the trees went up in the atmosphere. The fact that the fire uh, released a bunch of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, yeah, that did make it more painful. Green Diamond had promised to keep the carbon represented by the offsets locked away in this forest for at least 100 years. We're not making that commitment idly. We're making the commitment with the intent that we will fulfill it. The atmosphere doesn't care what your intention is. They're dead. So they're going to fall over, they're going to decompose. It's a, Danny Cullen Ward is policy director for Carbon Plan, a nonprofit that tracks and analyzes carbon offset programs. So all of these trees that we're seeing here that burned down, yeah. these were all part of an offset program? Yep, that's right. He says offsets are now a billion dollar business with almost no oversight. He argues they often let polluters off the hook. Their carbon emissions remain in the atmosphere forever, while the offset in something like a tree is only temporary. The problem comes in when people say it's okay for me to pollute because I bought one of these kinds of credits. CBS News analyzed corporate social responsibility reports and found that major polluters, including big oil, big tobacco, and big airlines, are relying on carbon offsets to help them meet their climate goals. You will find airlines, major industries saying we've gone carbon neutral because we've purchased these credits, which I think for many people gives a misleading impression that these companies have solved the problem when at best we are getting started learning some things that work and some things that really don't work. And many climate conscious consumers are using them too. A lot of individuals who care about these things are buying offsets for their plane trip. How do they know that any of that is actually offsetting their pollution? They have no way of knowing. There's no regulations that exist in, in the usage of these credits. So a lot of this might just be making people feel good. Some of it certainly is. He also worries some timber companies are now being paid to do what they would have done anyway, let their trees grow. The discussion looks a lot like, give me an offset credit or I'll cut down the trees. That's essentially the claim that they're making. It kind of sounds like holding trees hostage. It, it is directly analogous to that, yes. Nearly half of all the carbon offsets in the world are now stored in trees. But here in the American West, which is getting hotter and drier and more prone to wildfires, many are now saying that forests like these are no longer a reliable weapon in the fight against climate change. New research shows wildfire risk could be at least four times greater by the end of the century. And at least six large carbon offset sites in forests in California, Oregon, and Washington have burned in the past seven years. 
trees and soil and other nature-based solutions are inherently risky, but we don't have a choice at this point. We need to have nature as a climate solution. We're sober about the reality of climate change. Elizabeth Wilmot is Carbon Program Director at Microsoft. The tech giant is pledging to be carbon negative by 2030 and then remove the equivalent of all its historical carbon emissions by 2050. So the capacity of this plant is 4,000 tons. It is helping fund carbon removal projects, including this one we visited last year in Iceland. So this is going to make history. Yes. Which actually sucks carbon dioxide out of the air and buries it underground. Nature is nature. But and Wilmot a, says it's result, incredibly hard to find legitimate and offset us, and removal programs. We first started our carbon removal program, we got 200 project proposals, and many of those didn't actually describe carbon removal. Microsoft thoroughly vetted Green Diamond and paid them to offset hundreds of thousands of tons of its CO2 emissions. And then many of those offsets burned in the bootleg fire. Isn't the very nature of an offset allowing a company to continue to pollute? It's not actually solving the problem. We need to both reduce and remove. So make dramatic cuts in our carbon emissions and also then offset what we can't. California runs one of the largest offset programs in the world. It tries to manage the risk of drought and wildfire by placing a portion of each forest offset credits into a reserve account, like insurance. When a forest burns down, those credits are removed from the system. To offset the offset, yeah. Danny so Cullen Ward says that so-called buffer pool isn't keeping up with the new normal of climate change fueled wildfires. California's Air Resources Board disagrees with that characterization. In the span of about less than 10 years, we've essentially burned through the insurance protections that were meant to last 100. But I don't think it's right to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We got a lot of work to do. Douglas Reed acknowledges the offsets market may need higher standards but says trees are worth the risk. Are there risks in trees? Is it possible that they burn? Uh, yes, that's a possibility. At this stage, we can't afford not to use all the tools that we have. For CBS Saturday Morning, I'm Ben Tracy in Eastern Oregon. There's no doubt his last statement is true. Right. We have to do everything we can, but we were all saying throughout the piece, oh yeah, Oh, wait, yeah. Yeah. we've got to find solutions. Yeah, the solutions are going to be painful, but until we start making them, we aren't going to see any kind of reversal on, on some of the issues that we're facing. And that is the continued What a great look at, yeah, yeah, I mean, what a great look at this overall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. A billion dollar business with no oversight. We have right. to offset the offset. So that reminds me of that fusion piece you, oh, yeah. you did. Oh, yeah, there you go, you oh, yeah. Yeah. Fusion. Speaking of solutions. Great job, Ben Tracy yeah. and producer Chris Spender. Yeah. Yeah.